Welcome back to Sunday AM. Now, Childline is the only 24-hour phone service available to children in this country and 80% of their money comes from public donations. So they rely on us to keep this vital service going. Earlier this week, I went along to Childline HQ at their busiest time between 7 and 10 p.m. at night to find out how the service works. Um, Childline was established in 1988 and at that time, it was promoted as a service for children who are being hurt or abused. And I suppose one of the things we've always done within Childline is listen to children and consult with children about our services. And what children were telling us was like that it's very difficult sometimes just to open up straight away about a very sensitive issue. Sometimes they didn't know that what was happening wasn't okay. And sometimes they don't know their rights. In terms of why children in this country would be ringing Childline or getting in contact with you, what are those reasons? Well, for many reasons, um, sometimes it's just for a chat. And sometimes they can be tough calls because it might be, I have nobody to talk to, nobody listens to me. And they might just want to chat about their day or that they scored a goal at football or whatever. Um, from that end of the scale to the serious end where there's maybe suicide ideation or abuse. So, and then in between, it's a normal angst of growing up. Fights with brothers and sisters, bereavement, relationship, peer pressure, you name it. So we're never bored in Thailand because you never know before you pick up that phone what the call is going to be about. What does it take to become a volunteer, Louise? Do you need certain qualifications? No, lots of people would think that you need to have a qualification. That's not the case. You just need to be willing to, to give your time to lend an ear and be here for four hours a week to listen to the children. How do you coax it out of them what that issue is? Well, we certainly we don't rush them, you know, and we're here, we tell them this is their, their space to talk about whatever is going on for them. And they may have to phone us a couple of times or contact us online a couple of times before they build up that trust to actually let us know what's going on for them. So we'd never rush them. Moving on to your online services, Louise, is it an easy site for children to navigate? Yes, very easy. You just log on to childline.ie and this screen will come up. You click on the chat to us. You'll be asked to come up with a username. It can be a nickname. It doesn't have to be a real name. Um, come up with a password and you're ready to have a chat. And all of your calls and indeed online chats are confidential? They are. We don't trace calls. We don't use caller ID and we don't uh, use the computer IP addresses either. One of the things we always do is encourage young people to talk to those closest to them. There's many reasons why they don't talk to the people close to them. And, you know, for example, we would have seen it a lot in the recession where, you know, you might say, have you talked to mum about this or told, and it, they might say, well, dad just lost his job, so mum and dad are stressed. We, I don't want to be adding to that stress. So they're very aware of what's going on in the adult lives and are protective of that. Tell us about the gender balance. Is there one? We're a member of Child Helpline International and of all of their members, we're the only member in the world that has 69% of boys calling the phone service. It's usually much lower than that, and um, maybe 15, 20% of boys engage. And I believe that's because of our ethos. When we say we're non-judgmental, we mean it. If children suffer abuse or trauma, they often present to child in, in very different ways depending on their gender. Girls will often present sounding upset um, and scared, and that's a lot easier to deal with than the boys who very often, because when they're stressed, can present in an aggressive way. But we look behind the behaviour. What's, what's the reason for that behaviour? Margie, is it true that you are reliant on almost 80% of public donations to keep Childline going? For 30 years, we've had the support of the general public. And it's been fantastic and kept Childline going. What are your hopes and expectations for Childline over the next decade? Well, my hope for Childline is that our online service goes 24 hour. At the moment, it's uh, available from 10 a.m. to 4 a.m. So the hours between 4 and, and 10, it's not available. So that's due to lack of resources. So we'd really like to expand that service. And also, I suppose my dream is that we keep up with the latest technology. What are children using? And I've no doubt that within the next five, 10 years, 
there will be new ways of children communicating with their pals and childline. So that's my dream. <laughs>